Okay, let's be honest. You're a little on the gray side, and you have this hankering to attempt a through hike, but you'd like to learn some training tips that might help you get to the point where you can start the hike. Well, you've tuned into the right place. Pass the Metamucil and stay tuned, because today I'm gonna to talk about 10 training tips for older hikers. Okay, welcome to AK Wild One. In my documentary, A Pacific Crest Trail Cottywample, I talk about a 103-year-old Atna Athabascan elder who I interviewed a few years ago. And he had this philosophy about growing older. And he said that basically you should uh, choose an age and be it. That quote was the impetus or motivation behind our decision to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. Just because, I, just because I was getting older didn't mean I had to fall apart. Remember, as you go through these tips, just try to pull out the principles. Don't, don't, try to, don't look at it as a, a recipe you want to follow. Um, this, this, this list is not the definitive source, and you should exercise your own critical thinking to see if they apply to your specific situation. Okay, number one, and this one might be a little controversial. I think it's important to give up the habits that might impede your your journey. You know, for me, it was giving up alcohol. I decided years ago that I wanted to remain active, and I noticed that by giving up drinking, I had more energy, and I found highs by being in the high country, not from alcohol. And um, giving up that bad habit actually gave me the willpower, I think, to continue hiking through rough days and, and through my training. Okay, tip number two is to train with trekking poles. For me, that's a no-brainer. I can't tell you the number of times that having a pair of trekking poles on the Pacific Crest Trail or even hiking in Alaska has prevented me from stumbling and falling and possibly injuring myself. So that just seems to be a no-brainer and something most people will carry, especially if they have a freestanding tent that requires trekking poles. Number three, in my mind, is to pay attention to your feet. Find the right pair of shoes. Agonize over finding the right pair of shoes. For me, I, I tried out five different pairs of shoes before I settled on the, the type of shoe that I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail in. And I started out at a size 13 and my feet swelled to size 15 by the time we were through. But I found a pair of shoes I was comfortable with. I went to a, a running store in, in Anchorage and the person there, the salesperson there, did a gait analysis and helped match me up with a good insole. And I feel like that really paid off because my feet were pretty comfortable during the trip. Okay, tip number four is a few months before you start your through hike or long distance hike, do anything you can to train to keep moving. For us, it was hiking, snowshoeing, at least five miles a day. Flash trained with her pack, but I didn't. She packed yoga books, water bottles, everything. The bottom line is to, well, get off your bottom, right? Move each day, do whatever you can to get those muscles used to the workout. Number five is find a steep trail to train on because learning those foot placement skills are really important. For us, we hiked our favorite mountain, which is Willow Mountain, which is just basically about a five mile round trip, but it's very steep and I learned I learned it became almost second nature to use my trekking poles and how to, how to walk down steep, steep paths where there were rocks and rock slides and all that kind of stuff. And when I got to the PCT, nothing was ever as steep as what I encountered on Willow Mountain. And I felt like that prevented a lot of injuries. Number six is to stay hydrated during training and then transfer that habit to the trail. A good thing about you know, paying attention to how much water you're drinking during training is you can kind of use that to calibrate how much water you're going to need in the desert. Because once you get to the Sierra, you know, there's water everywhere. But um, in the desert, I learned that I could go about two, anywhere between two and five, five miles on a liter of water. The most water I carried was six liters of water. That's pretty heavy. But it gave me a way to estimate how much water I needed between water sources. And I wanted to stay hydrated. I didn't want to skimp on that. Tip number seven is when you attempt the through hike, 
especially when you're an older person, is don't come out of the gate hot. I remember our driver at um, our our driver to Campo mentioned that about 30% of the hikers uh, drop out before 300 miles, and usually it's due to foot injuries. So we started out walking about 10 miles a day, and after a week, I think we boosted it up to 12, then to 15, and then ultimately 22 miles a day in Washington, with which is still pretty good, I think. Uh, very, there's a lot of steep passes you got to cross over in Washington. And the longest we did was 26 miles a day. And that was generally if there was a, a zero ahead or a cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger would be even better. So tip number eight is to enjoy your zeros. So we found a routine that worked for us. Basically, we would hike hard five full days. Then we would take a Nero of about 10 miles. And then we'd spend a night in a motel or at a campground. And then one full day, one additional day, in a campground or a motel and then hit the trail again. And that seemed to work well for us. Number nine, tip number nine, is know your limitations. For us, 22 miles a day in Washington was our pace. The most miles we ever hiked was 26. But when your feet and legs are telling you to slow down, make sure you listen to them. Tip number 10 is don't apply the factory model to your hike. Don't obsess over doing X miles a day. I think that burns you out because you get preoccupied with miles and you kind of lose, you lose the reason why you're even out there. You don't have to answer to anyone and don't let anyone discourage you. You know, you're an older person, you're out here, there's people your age who have given up or are unable to hike. And so take pride in the fact that you're even out on the trail. Well, those are my 10 tips, my training tips, but they're also some advice for when you get on the trail. Join us next time when Flash will demonstrate her morning, midday, and evening stretching exercises. She's a certified yoga instructor who takes stretching seriously, contrary to me. I'm much more interested in drinking a cup of coffee in the morning and trying to take beautiful pictures because the light's so wonderful. Also, if you have any additional training techniques for older hikers or tips, uh, please leave them in the comments section. Also, if you have any ideas you'd like to see me focus on in future videos, please feel free to leave those in the comments too. Well, until we meet again, down the trail.